Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. It is Pray and Share Warriors time because it is five, a tiny bit after five. Sorry about that. I had to run and do something real quick. Sometimes that's what happens when you're the adult here to take care of the child. Um, sometimes you have to go and do things. All right. Well, tonight we are going to talk about we're going to continue unpacking Passion 22, um, my notes that I wrote down. And tonight, we're going to talk about David Platt's message, which I thought was so good. But it has a lot of scripture tied to it also. So, since I write down the scripture, it helps me remember what they said. I mean, I will never, ever be able to word for word tell you anyone's message but when I listen to them I write down the things that they're saying to me okay so I am still uploading January 6th coffee treasures on YouTube tonight I don't know, our internet went crazy this afternoon, and it went out, and then I had to go and pick up groceries, and so, yeah, so I'm still uploading that. Probably when I upload this, it will probably beat that one, because that one is just, gets to about 50-something percent, and I don't, the, YouTube just drops out, I don't know. All right, well, I still am going to work on some live, like being able to do both live, but I didn't have time to work on that today. So let's pray. God, we just come before you, and we just thank you for all the many things that you have done in our lives, God. We just pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to what you want to teach us tonight through your word and through this messenger that you sent, David Platt. God, um, I just want to thank you for what passion conferences mean to me every year. It just kind of helps me set my tone for the year to focus back on you and focus on the things that I need to be focusing on. And uh, I just pray for anyone that comes here that they would be blessed by hearing some of your word. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. God, please remove me from this video and uh, let the Holy Spirit speak through me and in Jesus name I pray amen okay my name is charm and this is my ministry that I set up in 2020 called awesome treasures ministry so let's talk about what David Platt had to say I kind of told you about the 12 verse challenge last night too, um, along with Sadie Rob, uh, Sadie Huff's message about identity. So David Platt started out with Matthew 28, and I have it marked in my Bible, and. If you know, Matthew 28, um, 19 and 20 is the Great Commission. And it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So that is part of, as Christians, we are to share. We are to share the gospel. We are to teach them what we know. We are to um, make disciples of everyone. Make little Christ everywhere we go. We're, we are to make little Christ. And... Uh, that's what we we're supposed to do. And so he came right after Louis Giglio talked about the 12 verse challenge. So a lot of what he is talking about in his message is going along with that. 
So, <clears throat> it says, Go ye therefore, everyone, everyone there by appointment, God's word, the world, your life in this world. And so there's one truth, and that is John 3.16. So he talked about John 3.16. Well, I got it hot in here. I may have to take my sweater off. It was a little chilly in here. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so then he went to Acts 1.8. He was really hard for me to keep up with because he's got a ton of energy. I wish I had that amount of energy. And uh, he's just so good at speaking. So Acts 1.8 says... But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So I think what he was doing, and it says end of the earth, so what he was doing was showing all the times that Jesus talked about that it is our job to go out and share with others. And what he was getting to is that we can't share with people that we can't communicate in their language. So we have to get these verses converted into their language so they can understand, so they can read the truth too. So Acts 2.4 talks about the Holy Spirit coming. 2.4 And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And um, we read this last night in youth. We started studying Acts. We're doing, we're doing, what is it called? The Bible pro? No, it's not the Bible Project. I can't remember what it is, but it's like these little, these guys have done these drawings that explain the chapters of the Bible, and it's very, it's very good, and it's very short, and it's very, brings out all the good details, so we started doing that last night at youth. Okay, so then he talked about Acts 8, 1 through 4. And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul... He made havoc of the church, entering into every house, inhaling men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere, preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. So they were doing what Jesus asked them to do. And after Stephen was stoned, I think that a lot of them left and went somewhere else, but they went other places, and they still were spreading the gospel. Okay. Acts 11, 19 through 21. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word but to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. 
And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. So these men that were going out different places, they were being successful with what they were teaching. Okay, Acts 13, 1 through 5. He is, he is one that just had, there's just tons of scriptures that he read. Uh, Acts 13, 1 through 5. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manon, Manaean, which had been brought up with Herod the, the Tetrarch and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Oh my. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. So again, he's separating them and sending them different places to spread the gospel. And so um, if they would have all stayed together, the, we, we might not know the gospel if they would have all stayed in one place. If they would have gone, you know what, we're afraid, we're not going anywhere, we're going to all stay together so that we can protect each other, but they didn't. They went out in boldness, they separated, they went in different places. They did exactly what Jesus asked them to do in Matthew 28. Okay, Acts 16. Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. So again, just different areas, different people are coming together to spread the gospel to teach about Jesus, to even teach the Jews about Jesus. The Jews did not believe who Jesus was. They rejected Jesus. Many, many still reject Jesus and are waiting, waiting eagerly for their Messiah. They're waiting for who will be the Antichrist and they'll think is their Messiah, but really not. Okay, Romans 15, 19 through 24. Through, many, through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel now where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation but as it is written to whom he was not spoken of they shall see and they that have not heard shall understand seeing where i'm reading to 
For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you, but now have no more place in these parts, and having a great desire these many years to come unto you. Whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey, and to be brought on my way thitherward by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. But now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. So again, just different places. Different places. Following the Holy Spirit, when they got the Holy Spirit, they followed what the Holy Spirit told them to do. So now let's go to Revelation 5, 1 through 13. Revelation 5. Five, one through thirteen, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals, and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in the earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book neither to look therein, and I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon, and one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lambs, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are, are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Okay. And the four beasts said, Amen, and the four and twenty elders fell down, and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And so that is a glimpse of Jesus, and who Jesus is. He is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And we will bow. We will bow to Jesus. So, I put Amen powerful. I thought that was very powerful when he read that. So then he skipped to Revelation 7, 9. And read that. 
And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. Wait a minute, that's eight, nine, seven, nine. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with the white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God saying Amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever Amen so that is a beautiful glimpse of heaven and how wonderful it's going to be and so I used to think that um, where it talked about in chapter 5 and 11 the 10,000s times 10,000 and thousands of thousands I thought that was us but I'm thinking that we are described in 7-9 um, but it could be both because if we die before Jesus comes back, then that could be us. And then this could be us from the rapture. Who knows? Only God knows. Not going to lose any sleep over it. Okay, Romans 10, 17. Um, so then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So 3.2 billion are unreached. Like they don't have the Bible in their own language. So then he told a story about this young girl that got caught up in trafficking because this happens a lot in other countries. It's really sad, but they will come to the parents, it was just her mother, and her dad had left, but it was just her mother, and they will come to the parent, or the parents, and they will go, I have this wonderful opportunity for your daughter. I will take her to the city, and she will work in a restaurant, or she will, you know, work making garments, or they, they tell them something, but sadly what happens is they take them into trafficking. So he told this story about this young lady that was trafficked and kind of used it to drive his point home about the fact that she might not have been trafficked had her mother heard the gospel before, known, known to trust God instead of trusting this man and um, so she got, you know, she's, she's like trapped in human trafficking. It's, it's true bondage, and you have nothing. You have absolutely nothing. And so he said that brokenness, you have so much to offer. Healing is not never-ending. God's glory shines in this broken world. We are not the rescuers, we are the rescued and ransomed. Let all the peoples praise you. Live for this, people of all nations, to hear and receive the good news message. So really this is all about the challenge, the, the 12 verse challenge. And helping these unreached people have the Bible interpreted in their own language. And uh, he said that apparently it rained during Passion 22, and Louis said that it was a sign of God's blessing. And I've heard that before, that rain is a sign of God's blessing. And um, 
He said, Jesus came to be our rescue. And uh, I said, am I willing to be a part of nations hearing about Jesus that can't be reached? And um, I did sign up to do this. I'm, I'm going to, something's going to go. I'm going to cut some expenses somewhere because I really think that's important. And I think that's part of what we're here to do is we're to help spread the gospel. And sometimes I can't, um, I take care of our son, so I can't just jump on a plane and go to Africa or anywhere that I might feel led to go. But I can help in that way. I can cut back on spending things that I don't need to spend money for. Like I hardly ever eat out. Hardly ever. And so I asked God, I said, how am I going to do this, God? And he said, use your raise. So I'm using my raise to do that this year. That's money I wasn't expecting to get anyway. So it's all good. I'd rather use it for something else. Well, I hope you enjoyed David Platt's um, message. I thought it was really good. I still need to check and see if you can go and watch the full length Passion 22. Last time I checked, it looked like they don't have it available anymore. But I can check again. I don't mind checking again. But these are just my overviews of these great speakers that I had the privilege of listening to. So now it's time to do a gospel message. I think my husband's home. I'm cooking a roast, but I don't know. It doesn't seem to be getting tender, so I don't know. It's kind of crazy. I'm cooking it in, it's not a crock pot, it's... I don't know, it's this, it's like an electric skillet, but it has a grill on the bottom of it, and uh, I don't know. I don't know whether we're eating that tonight, or we may be eating eggs. I'm fixing to go cook in a little bit. So number one, admit that you need a Savior, admit that you are a sinner. Two, believe in Jesus Christ, who He is. Three, commit uh, your life to Christ. And so here is a prayer. Um, it's very short. Just repeat it after me if you would like to be saved right this moment. Or whenever you watch this. I don't know. The way uploading's going, uh, this will probably upload to YouTube tomorrow. I don't know. I'm going to try to upload it in a little bit. Okay, Jesus, I have sinned. Thank you for dying for me so I could be forgiven. I trust you alone for eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. So if you said that prayer, then the angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you want to say your own prayer, then say your own prayer. But do try to do the ABCs. It may or may not matter. It's just a good guideline, I think. So in order to... Uh, develop a better relationship with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, then read God's Word. Read God's Word every day and pray and praise God. And share, share your salvation with others also. Pray for God to help you find a church where you can be baptized and where you can worship and learn with your church family and also be of service to others so okay I'm gonna get off of here so let me pray God thank you for the message that we heard uh, by David Platt your messenger God thank you for all these scriptures and reminding us of how 
the apostles did go out to different areas. They did exactly what Jesus asked, him, asked them to do. And also a reminder of the beauty that we have to look forward to in heaven. That we get the honor of worshiping Jesus and being a part of your kingdom family forever, God. To do whatever you want us to do. We just pray that you would give us the boldness to go out and share your truths and share the gospel of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, well much love. I think my husband came in a while ago. He probably wants to know why the roast isn't done. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.